good day students today we'll have the subject physics and topic we we'll have here is electric charges objectives by the end of this topic the students should be able to charge a body by friction induction and contact when five bodies charged either similarly or oppositely Instructional materials used in this topic. Basic physics for senior secondary schools by P. N. Odume. New school physics for senior secondary schools by M. W. Anyakoha. Essential principles of physics by Emeka Ike. The concept of electric charges. Matter is made up of atoms. An atom has a central core called the nucleus, meaning that you have it that at the center of an atom, you have what is called the word the nucleus. The nucleus is made up of the proton and the neutron. These are found inside the nucleus. The neutron has no charge while the proton has a positive word charge. We can say that the proton is positively word charged. The electron which is negatively charged revolves around the nucleus in orbit or shell. So we'll have it that around the nucleus we'll have the word electrons. They move around the word, the nucleus of an atom. In an atom, if the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, such atom is said to be electrically world neutral. So we have it that an atom has equal number of protons with that of the electrons. Such atom is said to be what? Electrically neutral. That is, the positive charge neutralizes the negative world charge. And the net charge on the atom becomes zero. For instance, you have an atom that has it has um, the positive, the proton is one, and then the electron is what one. So positive charge plus one, and the electron is what the one negative. It will neutralize. So the negative charge and the net charge on the atom becomes what zero. When an atom, when an electron is removed from an atom. The atom will have excess positive charge and it is said to be positively world charged. So if an electron is removed from an atom, the atom will have excess positive world charge. What does that mean? For instance, you have an atom with a proton and the neutron at the center of the nucleus and you have one atom there on, within the, uh, the shell and once it loses an electron, what is now remaining in that atom is just the proton, which is positively charged. Besides the neutron, there has no charge. So that atom itself, we say it is now becoming, it now becomes positively world charged. And they say to be, say it is become what? Positively world charged. If on the other hand, a neutral atom, a neutral atom gains an electron. A neutral atom gains an electron, it becomes negatively what charged because it will now have excess what electron because the atom now has excess negative what charges. Thus, objects become charged when they gain or lose what electrons. Now, types of electric charges. There are two main types of electric charges. The first one is positive charge. Second one is negative word charge. Fundamental law of charge. Fundamental law of charges. We have the law states that like or similar charges repel each other, while unlike charges attract towards each other. Meaning, if you have uh, negative charges together, they repel each other. If you have positive together, they repel each other. But if you have Positive and negative, they attract each word. Or they will say that like charges repel each other, while unlike charges attract each word. Other, is that okay? 
Now, we have these as some things we'll come across in this topic. We have conductors. These are materials that allow electric charges to pass through them easily. Materials that allow electric charges to pass through them what? Easily. we we'll call them conductors. Examples of conductors include metals, salt solution, human body. So these materials, they allow current electric charges, sorry, to pass through them what? Easily and we we'll call them conductors. Next is insulators. These are materials that do not allow electric charges to pass through them easily. They don't allow electric charges to pass through them easily. It's examples of insulators include plastic, paper, dry wood, glass, and so on. So these, example, these are examples of insulators. Now I want to go to electrostatics or static electricity. This is a type of electricity or electric charge that does not move from one point to another in the substance in which it is produced. They don't move, they don't flow. Just like we have electric current flowing through wire, these ones here, yeah, they do not flow. So we we'll call them they are static. We we'll call them static what electricity. So we say it's a type of electricity that does not move from one point to another in the substance in which it is produced. The study of electrostatics is the study of charges at what rest. Meaning if you are studying um, charges at rest, what you are studying is what? Electrostatics. Is that okay? There are observations of static electricity in our daily experience. For instance, the first one you can see is when you rub the barrel of a plastic barrel vigorously on dry hair. If you have the barrel at your right weight in your classroom, the barrel of it, that's the thing that covers it itself, the barrel of it vigorously on dry hair, not at its weight, dry hair. Now hold the rubbed pen near some small pieces of paper. It should be observed that the rubbed plastic barrel attracts small pieces of what? Paper. I don't know why you have uh, observed that. So that is an example of where you can observe um, electrostatics. And that one is when you comb your hair on a dry day. Example, during hammer season with a plastic comb. You observe that tufts of hair, meaning bunches of hair held together we are attracted to various parts of the comb. I think I've observed that. So that is also an example of static what? Electricity. Also, during Hamilton City, you can feel some crackling sensation as you comb your dry hair with a plastic comb. So this is because the plastic comb passing through the dry hair, as well as the hair itself, acquires some electric charges by friction. They are rubbing each other. So called by friction between the two and they become electrified. So these are some situations whereby you are able to find or observe static electricity. Now ways of producing charges. How can you produce this kind of charges? There are three methods of producing charges. One by friction, two by contact, by electrostatic induction. These are the three main methods of producing electric charges. The first one is by friction. Now, how do you go about this? When ebonite rod is rubbed with four ebonite rods, we we'll have materials. For instance, you have your biro, which is a galvanized. Uh, plastic materials. When eponite rod is rubbed with four ordinary hair, it acquires negative charges. You know that the air of animals is known as four. So you have that when eponite rod is rubbed with what? Four. I've given you examples today where you rub the barrier of your barrel against dry hair. The dry hair they are serving as four. It acquires negative what charges. 
the opponent's shot acquires what negative charges because during this process of rubbing, the foam material transfers, it gives out some of its electrons to the rod. Thus, the rod gains excess negative charges. Now, the foam releases its electron and then the ebonized rod receives it. If it now receives excess negative charges, it now becomes negatively world charged. Thus, the rod gains excess negative charges and becomes negatively world charged. While the four becomes positively what charged because it has lost what electrons. So the one that has given up electrons now becomes what positively charged. While the ebonized rod now becomes negatively what charged. Also, when a glass rod, ordinary glass material, a glass rod is rubbed with silk. The materials you wear, silk material you wear, silk. The rod loses electrons to the silk and becomes positively charged. When a glass rod is rubbed with silk, the rod loses towards electrons to the silk and becomes positively what charged. While the silk material gains the electrons and becomes what negatively charged. So in this one, when you rub the ebonite rod with foam, you now have it that eponized rod gains excess electrons and becomes negatively charged. In this one, now we have the glass rod, glass rod rubbed with silk material. The rod will now lose electrons. No? Yes? The rod loses electrons to the silk and becomes positively what? Charged. So the rod here becomes what? Positively charged. While ebonized rod becomes what? Negatively charged in this process. So while the sick material gains the what? Electrons and becomes negatively what? Charged. Is that okay? So from here, objects become charged when they gain or lose what? Electrons. So we have said that in this friction, this process of uh, rubbing by uh, rubbing, yes, we have it that ebonized rod becomes negatively what? Charged. Why the glass rod now becomes what? Positively charged. Now, another way of producing charges is by contact. We can also produce charges by contact when we bring two neutral conductors, C and D, in contact and place them on insulating stands. What do you mean by neutral conductors? They have equal charges. C and T. The, the, the conductor C has equal charges of both positive and negative applicable to that of conductor D. A positively charged glass rod is brought near C. We'll have it here. Look at this conductor, the two neutral conductors in contact placed on insulating stand. So we have here is C, and here is what? D. So a positively charged glass rod is brought near C. Remember here that the glass rod, when rubbed with silk, became positively what? Charged. Now, a positively charged glass rod is brought near C. Look at this here. Positively charged glass rod is brought near what? It is not in contact. It is brought near what? C. If D is a press from C while the rod is still near C, it means that D is positively charged while C is negatively charged. Now look at them here. Look at the neutral conductors C and D. Now have the glass rod placed near both conductors. Mounted on a certain certain stand here, you have it that in step two here, while this is still nearer, that we have it that this D separates, D separates from what C. All the charges, all the negative charges in this conductor here, D, they move to the C, and all the positive charges here in that of the uh, conductor C all move towards D. And now makes this D here to become positively what? Charged. Is that okay? Because we'll see that fundamental law of charges that 
like charges they repel each other while unlike charges they attract towards each other so c is not separated from d here c is charged by induction while d receives its charge from c by what contact d gets its own charge from c by what contact because they are in contact with each other while this c here now gets its own charge by induction because it is not really in contact with this world, um, with this um, glass rod. It's not really in contact, placed near it. So when the rod is removed, negative charges spread on C and positive charges spread on D. So you can see it here. The rod has been removed entirely from both conductors, and then the negative charges will now spread here, while the positive charges now will spread on D. And the charges spread on the conductors as the glass rod is what removed. So with this now, you have charged this conductor to have only positive charges, while you have now charged this conductor C to have only negative words charges. Now we have another way of producing charge by electrostatic induction. This is a method by which a neutral body is given a positive or negative charge by bringing it near a charged body. You don't bring it in contact. It's a method by which a neutral body, meaning it has equal charges, so have one, two, three negative charges, one, two, three positive charges, equal, now equal. So we have, it's a method by which a neutral body, this body on its own is a neutral body. It has equal negative charges and equal positive what? Charges is given a positive charge or negative charge by bringing it near a charged world body. So we want to charge this in such a way that it will have only positive or only what negative. Now charging a conductor CD positively. Only this conductor, one, the one end is labeled C, the other end is labeled what D. Is that okay? We we'll have here as a neutral conductor. I have told you why we we'll call it neutral conductor. Now we have it that now negatively charged ebonite rod. The ebonite rod when you rub against the foil you have it that it becomes negatively charged as we discussed in ways of producing charges by friction. Now when you now bring it now nearer to this object here, now the negative charges will attract the positive charges nearer to this end. While you have only this one down there. So it will now repel the negative charges to the extreme part of that conductor. Now when you now remove, when you now have it here, you now add it by touching. If you now add this by touching it, there will be momentary flow of electrons to the world add. If you now add it while this charge is here, while this ebonite charge is still here, if you now add the conductor by touching it, the currents will flow. I've said that today that human body is a conductor. So the currents, you no, know, the charges now will flow through human body to the ground. So now have a momentary flow of electrons to the world earth. If you now remove this ebonite rod, now the positive charges will spread around. Is that okay? So I want to have the notes now. Fig I, as I've explained before, now represents a neutral body mounted on an insulating stand. When the negatively charged ebonized rod is brought near the end, C. You can see it here. This is a neutral conductor. A neutral conductor mounted on an insulator as in fig II above. The electrons in the rod repel the electrons at C and move them to the extreme D. I've explained that. At the insulated body by touching it as in fig III. You can see it's, it is not added by touching it. Once you not touch it, the, the charges will flow to the earth. Add the insulated body by touching it as in fig I, 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 so that the negative charges conduct away. Remove the inducing charge as in fig IV. It's now removed. This inducing charge, which is in the ebonized rod here, is now what? Removed. And observe that the positive charges will be spread around the conductor, leaving it positively what? Charged. And this is 
self-explanatory, because I've already explained with that the diagram before now. So we have now charging a conductor CD negatively. How can we charge this conductor? The same conductor we have here, how can we charge it now so that it will have only negative charges? Like you have here, only positive. How can we charge it now to have only negative what? Charges. Now we we'll have this as a neutral body or the neutral conductor mounted on an insulating stand. It has equal charges, one, two, three. That is negative charges are three, one, two, three. The positive charges are what? Three. So we can call it a neutral conductor. Now bring nearer to it now a positively charged glass rod. Nearer, not in contact. Now the positive charge will not attract the negative charges down. So towards this point C, where it will now repel the positive charge, uh, charges down to the point D there. Are you getting it? Based on that fundamental law of charges, does light charges repel each other while on light charges attract what? Each other. Now, we'll have it here that if you now touch it, now we have a elementary flow of the positive charges to the world X. And then when that uh, uh, positively charged glass rod is removed now, the negative charges will now spread around this conductor and it becomes negatively charged towards conductor. So we now want to look at the note. Fig I also represents a neutral body mounted on an insulating stand. Bring a positively charged glass rod to an insulated body to be charged. I have explained it. Negative charges on the insulated body are attracted towards the inducing charge, while the positive charges are repelled away from it as a fig I, I above. Add the insulated body by touching it as in fig I, I, I above so that the positive charges conduct away. Now remove the inducing charge as in fig IV above and observe that the negative charges will spread around the conductor, leaving its negatively world charge. So this is how to charge a conductor, a neutral body, positively or negatively by electrostatic world induction. Is that okay? Now I want to look at distribution of charges. How can you distribute charges? Testing charged conductors with instruments called electroscope and proof plane have shown that for a spherical conductor, a spherical conductor, look at the spherical conductor, the charges are evenly distributed. The charges are what? Evenly distributed. They have tested and they have found out using this instrument, the electroscope and the proof plane to find out how is the charges distributed. So the experiment has shown that charges are evenly what distributed in spherical conductors. You can see it's evenly what distributed. For a pear-shaped conductor, most of the charges reside at the pointed ends. Look at the pear-shaped. The pear-shaped what conductor. You have it that most of the charges are here, are concentrated at the sharp what points. So what it is you know, even distributed here, but now much more concentrated at this pointed word end. For a hollow conductor, the charges reside on the outer surface and not in the inside. This is a hollow conductor. You have it here, you have the charges. You have the charges spread outside the material. Now you have a triangular shaped conductor. You have at the pointed ends, you have much concentration of the charges. You have them here, you have them here. Then you have the next one is a square shaped world conductor. At the sharp point, here you have much concentration of the world charges. While you have the even distributed on this part. Then finally, you have the spare shaped conductor. So at this point, here, at this point, at the sharp point, here you have them to be much concentrated and other parts that are evenly well distributed. So these are the ways by which uh, charges can be well distributed in 
conductors.